Welcome to the very special edition of the Safety Third Podcast. Today we have our guest, Niall Red, who's no longer a permanent oh, yes. host. He's just... Actually, no. You know what it is? No, I'd you, rather you, be a guest. You know I'm how not much a host. healthier and brighter and more fun you are now that you've posted your video? Do you we, know, play, right? the, we played the video hob games. Goblin, the hobgoblin that you turned into, Nigel? You turned into uh, this little basement dwelling, you like, my, like but, crusty no, my office underwear, is not in the basement. incel... I was in an office... I was in an office dwelling. Oh, yeah. Office dwelling... Correct. Creature. Mm -hmm. I was just saying random words. I'm not even sure if half oh, of them were applicable. This bubbly or this sparkling water I just drank, uh, it's been on my desk for so long that it's not even carbonated anymore. That's gross. Is it growing mold? I don't even know where it's, when it's from. Anything I should get a new one. Grow. All right, Kevin. Nigel said he didn't want to talk about war stuff, so we won't talk about war stuff. We'll talk about how if you had to make your own body armor, how would you make it? Well, I was thinking this... about this the other day. Um... Oh man, you know they sell that, uh, you ever see houses that are up for construction and they have this like white tarp over all the walls and stuff? Yeah, have you seen? It says like Tyvek home wrap on it or something oh, like that. Oh, uh, it's like permanent, right? Is it permanent? Yeah, yeah. It's like they just, they, they put the wood up on the walls or the bricks up on the walls and they put this layer of like, sh you know, looks like Waterproof fabric thing. or plastic over it. And then yeah. they put like the, the actual siding of the house on. Yeah, water, I think that's just for waterproofing, right? Yeah, but that's made of polyethylene fibers. So, and that I know that they make sheet. body armor out of polyethylene. So maybe if you like sandwiched enough layers of that together with like epoxy or fiberglass and then that stuff, it might work. Yeah. I just don't know how useful body armor is at all. Like unless you um, have the ceramic plates and stuff. I mean, it's, it's really just, <clears throat> I watched, I watched some videos. It doesn't have to be ceramic to be useful body armor. The new lightweight no, 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 polyethylene I'm just saying, stuff. Like, it's, but it's oh, even homemade. like the, um. It's even just like the Kevlar helmets. It's like they're only for ricochets and other stuff. Like a direct, yeah. almost direct anything will go through both sides of the helmet. Well, I don't know. You, you take a bullet like to the side no, of the it's, helmet. But it's, I'm saying, but that's what it that's what it fine. protects you for, right? It's not. So it's like yeah. the, the if like shrapnel or something is like deflecting. Better. But I'm just saying that like it's. I just I, think that in a super chaotic situation, taking your time to, to wrap yourself in polyethylene I'm sheet fixing my light. might not be worth <clears> it. I, I've realized of all the, the modern warfare war zone I've been playing <clears throat> yeah. that I would, I would die very quickly in a war zone <laughs> and I don't, I don't, uh, I don't. I mean, yeah, I've seen how you play modern warfare. Well, you, you get a <laughs> helicopter and you crash it into the enemy team. Yeah, that doesn't, it would not work good. It in doesn't translate very well. I was looking up, uh, um, I, cause I was thinking like, like at the beginning of the pandemic too, I was looking, I bought, I spent like a couple hundred bucks buying like, uh, equipment to try to make like a DIY ventilator. Like everyone had like a hard on for DIY medical equipment. Cause some mm. news outlet, like right after they published about toilet paper, they started publishing about, uh, um, ventilators, which mm -hmm. did that ever even become a problem? Like not even close. Like the ventilators never like, uh, and of all the things, why was it ventilators? Like, doesn't it just seem like one of those media things? I feel like it was because there was there was a shortage. There was a shortage, and the fear was that like that was exact that mm -hmm. was like the thing sep the that the people who were really severely sick would need right. But and there was this was fear that there's a huge surge. Like like hear me out. If ventil if you're short on ventilators, you're probably well, like, short on everything, right? Well, no. The reason that that came out was I think early in Italy when there were the reports that they were basically. I mean, triaging people based on uh, like how likely they were, like how young they were. Right. And they were tearing ventilators out of people who they thought were the, the kind of be like, oh, this guy's 80. We're going to pull the ventilator yeah, and give it to this 25 year old. Right out of well, this. I'm sure that it's sterilized, you know, in between. They still <laughs> yank. They give it a good yank. Like. But it's like they were having to do that. So I think that's where the fear came from because nobody wants to have to basically. Like as a right. doctor, you don't want to have to be like, "Hey, this patient, uh, I'm deciding has no chance. I'm going to give it to oh this my guy." God, Kevin. So I think that's where the whole like ventilator, where that because it was from. they were they were in low supply. Because I like I the first thing I did as far as was, I know. there was a bunch of people that were doing this stuff, but it was like you know it's kind of a, an interesting challenge too to just be like, oh, like, here's this idea, like you know, when you sort of like. Uh, honestly, I, I feel like like making stuff in general is kind of funny because half of making stuff is like like having a problem, and a lot of times people who make things, their problem is machines that make things. We're like, I only if I had a machine that could make this thing, and then they start making a thing that is a machine that makes things. It takes longer like, to make the machine than it would have taken right. to make the thing. 
And so when someone presents you with like an <clears throat> actual problem of like, oh, we're going to run out of ventilators and you're sort of sitting there thinking like, oh, okay, well, how would I make a really shitty ventilator? Uh, now you have an actual problem. And so that, that kind of stuff is like, I don't know, gets my attention because it's like, oh, but here's this nifty challenge. Like, or, yeah. Mm, I mean, I thought a, about it too. purposeful challenge, you know? But then I, so I, I also thought that no matter how fast I am or how easy I make it, the companies yeah. that are already set up to build them can just crank them out like, don't, I don't sell yourself short, Kevin. I don't know. You're capable. Kevin, I've seen okay. you. I've seen you. Yeah. But could anybody else? When you focus, you, you're focused. You can really uh He's got produce. that Florida man on meth <laughs> stole 100 radios out of 100 cars in, tw- in three hours energy. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. But do the energy. hospital Sorry workers have that same energy to go out and... No, no, but you would have you would have other for people. The like you had pie, remember the <laughs> get water heaters, get some limit switches. Okay, so this is what I did. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I bought I bought like a uh, one of the bag the manual ventilators, and yeah. then I designed a like a three D printed like a flap valve, that was like a plastic flap that covers a hole, and so like when you breathe out, it like pushes the air. Oh, it pushes the flap open, but you breathe in, it sucks the flap closed, and then it was I bought um these really cheap timers on Amazon, like a relay timer where you could set like the relay on and relay off time. Uh, and then I bought also um, microwave, synchronous microwave motors that move the turntable. Like the really slow use, ones. Yes, but to use as a timer. So then what you could do is you could just take a microwave, you could pull the synchronous motor out of it because it spins based on the frequency of the, of the power lines. And then you could put a cam on it, like a 3D printed cam with limit switches. And so you could build the timing electronically using AC coming from your wall. And then it was just like a mechanism oh, yeah, to... I understood um, four of those words. That's fine. One I of them was wall. Another one was shit. <laughs> electricity. <laughs> I mean, that's really simple. Because that, that, was that was, to me, that was <laughs> like the design I actually don't challenge. know what, what you mean. But you know, yeah. like your microwave motor that spins the, tr- the turntable? Yeah. So that motor is uh, synchronous. I, mean, I think I'm okay. pretty sure it's the right terminology. Essentially, where the speed of the motor isn't based off of the voltage. It's based off of the AC current. Mm. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do a Dude, Google I, I have really very quick. low so like, knowledge when it comes you know, to so this So it's like stuff. 60 hertz. So the motor spins at, I don't know, whatever. Some, some multiple rate of that, equivalent like to 2,800 RPM. Yeah, so synchronous electric motor is an AC electric motor, which at steady state, the rotation of the shaft is synchronized with the frequency of the supply. So essentially what that means is that this motor will always spin at some rate equivalent or, or, or equal or some ratio to the frequency of the power powering. So mm-hmm. it's an AC motor that will always spin at a constant speed relative to um, the AC current being put into it. What determines that? Like how many poles it has or... probably something like that yeah it's like how quickly it shifts it forward but ac motors work a little different so what that means is like when you have the ventilator like there's a couple problems like you number one you have to be able to somehow mechanize air being pushed somewhere but it has to be like like a high like low volume high pressure and then you have to uh i guess high volume no yeah it's i have no input on any of this (laughs) like you can't use you can't use a fan basically like you have to have something that has like can put much more force mm. into the air and then you have to be able to control like the the frequency as like you know like i looked into a bunch and there's like there's you have to push air into people's lungs and you have to let it dwell and you have to but pull I, it out and you i let think it also yeah. another problem too is like you have to have i think you have to be able to measure the like you have to have a pressure measurement because if you push too much air in you're gonna pop people yes lungs. Uh, so you have to be able to measure the resistance they right? normally put a uh, a relief so hmm. I think that was the thing that I sort of had the most trouble with is you had to, you could buy reliefs where essentially it's like a bypass, right? Where it's hmm. like a pressure relief, like if it goes over, but then you also have this thing where it's just like, if you're on a fucking DIY ventilator, like, yeah, you can cut corners. <laughs> like if it comes time to use DIY ventilators, I guess yeah. you're yeah. already, I mean, you're, you're lucky that you even have this rickety thing. <laughs> An easy release would be like bubbling it through a column of water. Right. See, that's big brain. See, that's something I didn't even think of where it's like you could potentially have some sort of weird like, you know, uh, what, are the, what do they call that? Just like a pressure gate, like a barometer. Is that what a barometer is? Yeah, basically like a barometer, except that when it if it goes over a certain amount, it just starts spurting mm. water or air yeah. out. 
it's pushes like all the water the, uh, out. Old like when you're brewing, brewing beer. Mm-hmm. You probably That's do just... that in chemistry. Is there anything where you have a one-way valve? Yeah. And so it's like with like a fluid trap. That's how yeah, your sewer I works mean, too, right? They call usually it a bubble don't... trap, right? Yeah, I usually don't do it with like your. You don't do it actually trying to maintain any pressure, right. but you do do traps to, it's to keep capture. stuff from coming back in. Correct. Yeah. But it also happens to work as like a pressure release. The idea is that you can you can prevent air from coming, yeah, from right. getting in. Right. But you can neutralize if you don't want to bubble, like if you're boiling acid or something else, you don't want to just release it. Right. So you're able to your, neutralize it. Your toilet it. works very similarly, right? Where it's like you can stop sewer gas from coming through and out your toilet, but you don't necessarily like cap off the sewer line. So it's like if there was enough force, it could push the water out back into the bowl. I just but experienced there... that firsthand. Oh, Wait, no. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were saying something about that. Wait, what Shitter, happened, Kevin? Shitter's full? Shitter's oh, yeah. full. All, of the, all the shitters are full and overflowing at the same time. Wait, what? It was like, I don't know. I have a septic tank, which is like pros and cons, mo mostly cons, but <laughs> it fills up. And then it like, there's two tanks. There's a septic tank. It fills up with all the nasty stuff. Then there's like a little pipe that goes out to the front yard. And then that's like basically the clean water that's kind of fermented for a while. And it's not as like bacterially active. And then it like pumps it down kind of like underground. But what happens was there was a clog between the first tank and the second tank. So the first tank just kept filling up and filling up until it started coming out. Like when you flush the toilet, it just, it wouldn't flush. And it would like push water up the other toilet. <laughs> you know until like all the pressure started equalizing <laughs> but it really it came out of like the bathroom tubs and like there was like a little lag time so by the time we realized it everything was flooding that's one of those oh, moments no. where you just is that one of the pros like, or the cons oh that's, well <laughs> if you have a that's, septic that's company really it's a pro where you learn what it's like to be a, a man you know, everyone <laughs> has all these definitions of manliness but a real man. You need to deal with a septic how, tank. You got to yeah. deal how with you your deal septic with poop, tank overflowing poop water into your under bathtub. pressure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll That's... tell you how. You you take out your wallet and you say, "Just fix the problem. I want to use <laughs> right. a toilet again." You're like Billy, are you ready? Today's the day you become a man. He's like, "Yeah, I'm ready." And it's like, "All right, fix the septic system." <laughs> and no. Mm. I mean, apparently, I mean, I forget who I was talking to. Like, I mean, it makes good money. I forget who it yeah, was. Yeah, nobody wants to do it. Somebody said they're they're their cousin or something just got out of trade school and he started his own business. And then he's like, you know, I'm specializing in like that type of stuff, like septic and whatever. But then he's like, his business is just thriving. Like he's doing yeah. great. Cause he doesn't have, I mean, I guess the competition's probably not super high. People aren't racing to get but in there. But even if he's getting paid a lot, it's still a shitty job or wait. Apparently, a shitty, yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a shitty job. Twice. A, uh, sorry. Let me, let me, even if he gets paid well, it's a shit job. <laughs> Every Thank time you, I've had somebody come Thank out you. to manage with like Courtesy the septic laugh. system, they've always been kind of crazy. And I, yeah. I it's a very well, small sample size. Here's a question: What kind? Of, how how is the crazy like like describe it relatively? Is it like reptile person crazy? Like the same person oh, who has a bunch dude. of like not snakes but just reptiles? Do they know the kind of person that would do septic stuff? Same kind, kind of, of person that would post about um, the number the number of letters. In, in Barack Obama's name equals okay. eight, which is also, if you add up the number of the letter of numbers in, <laughs> in devil, it's the same amount of okay. whatever. So it's the same right. kind of, that's the person. The weight of the numbers, okay. if, you look at the, the, if you look at the total density of the numbers, you can cross-reference the... Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. Like, they're He's smart talking to about... figure that out. Wait, who did you say starting the... the no, I said, I said some random... It was when I was building this office, like a contractor, you're saying his cousin just got into that business and he's like i mean i think he was like he's he's not I think younger he's like 26 or something but he was making like really good money does he, does he talk he, he didn't mind does he talk he about the vibrational smell, frequencies of the universe no, and that, and that was, john lennon played the middle note c that's what he transposed imagine to the middle note c and and that's the frequency that heals everybody and he played it in that song to try to awaken everybody and that's why the cia killed him I learned that oh my, from my septic guy. Oh my god! <laughs> actually, a actually. Okay, here you want to know the secret to making Kevin, a lot of money. <laughs> Kevin wasn't just saying examples; he was actually relaying was information. Now that you've said it on the internet, they're gonna come. After oh my you. god! They're gonna come for me now. <laughs> they know where you poop. delete this podcast now for his safety. <laughs>
Uh, so you know the secret to making a lot of money. This is good advice for everybody. Hmm. Um, making a lot of money or having a lot of money? Making money. No, having okay. money, you're born with it. I'm saying, I just want to say, you can make a lot of money, but no, I guess but if you don't secret, have... If you, if you had to boil down what making a lot of money is, like how do you make a lot of money? There's, there's one answer. Uh, work really hard and no. pull yourself no, up by your... No, that's bullshit. Working hard doesn't get you paid shit. Uh, oh, I know the answer to this. Don't be weird. No. What? <laughs> no? Make people's I mean, problems go away. I guess so. If there's a man who can make your poop problem go away, tell me, Kevin, how much would you pay that guy to make your poop problem go away? I paid him $500 for the luxury of using my own toilet again. <laughs> Was it worth it? Oh, yeah. I would do it again. So, <laughs> Except not on weekend emergency hours. Kevin's like, I'll solve any problem, but I won't solve that. <laughs> No. What did he do? Did he just have to drain the main tank? How did they fix the uh, Yeah, the yeah. Plug? They get this huge truck. It's like, you know, a thousand gallons. They pull it up. They run a huge hose out. They got to open the tank. They stick the hose in there and they suck it all out. And uh, then he put, he has like this big old, you know, it's, it's a hose, but it also has like this big metal part on it. So it's like, you know, you can really jam it in something. And he jammed it in my main sewer drain for my pipe and just sucked oh, and he everything sucked out. sucked the clog out? Sucked the clog out. Like you could hear the toilets like, woo coming like this whistling noise coming out of the toilets and the drains and he sucked it clean it was nasty what did it smell like oh my god it smelled like bad breath and and uh porta potty were you it glad was horrible. That, were you glad that like once he was gone the smells like slowly went away he was like trying to talk to me but i just i had to get out of there i, I went inside closed yeah. all the doors and windows and he's like trying to talk to me about my, my youtube channel but i'm like dude i gotta go i'm busy I'm and, uh, you, man. and then it was kind of nasty because he like once everything was in the truck he like kind of backwashed it with water but the water is also dirty because i guess it's like some regulation where the hose has to have like clean water coming through it because think about it if you have a hose full of like nasty poop water and it's sucking it through the hose and you take it out of the septic tank mm. there's still going to be a lot of stuff left in the hose like when you're dragging it back with the truck so you have to like backflow it with fresh water when you take it out and uh, he was like, you know, cleaning the whole septic tank with that. And I could just see this mist of poop, misty poop water coming out of this <laughs> hole. And it was just pure poop particles, man. And this guy's like huffing it. I had to go inside. So how do you feel about my uh, suggestion that a, a successful business that makes a lot of money is one that makes people's problems go away? I guess you're right. I thought you were going to say like be personable or, you know. No, 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 no. Just make people's problems. Disappear. I mean, there's other ways to do it, but I feel like the most obvious one is like what problem do people have that they really don't want to deal with? Poopy water. Poopy, poopy, water, poopy dude, front yards. A, I feel like that so is a, a you're safe telling us way to have a, a get... very successful career. I bet you if you looked into how much money you could make like running your own septic pumping business, it's probably I, I, not bad. I was talking to this guy at Lowe's and he's he said he works for a... Uh, a plumbing company and his boss just got a 10 million dollar house out yeah. by the water yeah that's a lot of and this is like you know kind of a regional plumbing company this isn't national this is like but you know two or three counties that's what crazy. i find weird or interesting is since i moved into this office there i mean there are businesses up and down the street and i see them and i'm like i know what the rent is like here i know kind of like so when i see their square footage and i see what the business that they're running i'm always just like i, I guess they have like enough right. customers to pay for They're it but it's it weird work. there must be making it work but i was talking to a contractor who said that he worked on a project for somebody who used to have a business on the same street and i he was like this guy was like insanely rich he says the project the guy was trying to build a large like lake on his property or something i don't know what he said he was like a three million dollar construction Dude, project yeah, at that point you gotta where he was trying to give your money he was to trying a food to, bank he was just trying to build like some stupid lake with a fountain. I don't know. He said it was a dumb project or I mean, hopefully the guy's not listening. Sorry, sir. Your project's not dumb. No, um, it is dumb. Don't it? <laughs> okay, here you go. Buy, I'm afraid of this a man. Half million dollar lake and donate he knows where like, my is. $3 million to a food bank at that point. For um, Christ's no, sake. either way, he was just saying, because he said, I was like, oh crap. Like this guy's a lot of like, you know, if you're building like a lake. Or whatever, I don't know what it was. Right. Something frivolous. Just so when you wake up in the morning, you see it on your lawn. I'm like, it's like, you know, you gotta have some money to kill. And then when I was told what his business was, just I mean, I could say guess, but I don't think you'd ever guess what it was. 
Give us hints. We'll play 20 questions. It's kind of useless. I'll just say Wait, it. I'll just okay, say Okay, 20 questions. No, yeah. 20 questions. What is this mystery business that makes made someone very rich? I like this. Is it is uh, it a, a person? Is, this is all it a, hearsay, too. I've not thing. confirmed this. Is, is it a sorry? person? Kevin, what the hell? Yeah. Is it a service? <laughs> a robot is running the business, <laughs> Kevin. Um, I, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess it's a, it's, it's, guess it's a service. Um, okay. The first question's already a fail. <laughs> do you is have it a product? to, if you work for this pro company, do you have to go to college? Yo, these are questions I'm not going to be able to answer. Probably not. Do they sell a physical product that they make? I would say yes. How much training is involved? In probably, being able to probably, perform this task. Dude, I'm not like in depth on this industry. Maybe not. Maybe a, a little bit like standard amount of training. A couple months. <laughs> I don't know. Do they have maybe more than 10 employees? <laughs> I don't even know what this company is. Um, You're asking does it questions. involve heavy equipment? Yeah, I imagine. You're asking. I literally know so little about the company that I can't, you can't even, even speculate. These. What? You can't even speculate. I'm just, I said, yeah, they use heavy equipment, but like big machines, I guess. Okay. Uh, so some sort it's, of like construction. What, what number are we on, Nigel? What number question I don't was know. That? I feel like we're going to reveal it. You're going to go, oh, that's lame. Like I wanted to check. No, no, no. That's the whole point <laughs> of this. Now we're too far we're in. We're setting ourselves up for a disappointment. <laughs> um, and I know so little about the business. It's all just based on what I imagined the, in my head. You don't head. need a degree. It sounds like it's definitely some sort of I, like construction-y kind of thing. I didn't say is you machine, didn't need it. Is it the machine heavy enough to kill you? The machinery? It, I, I, I imagine if you messed up, it could... It could do some damage. So it's probably something you can get trapped in. Yeah. Do they make road signs? No. As far as I know. Maybe. I don't know. No, I don't think so. That also counts as one question. That was just an expansion upon my previous question. <laughs> no. The answer's no. Dude, I don't know. I never even looked up their company. Right, okay, we give up. What is it? <laughs> just He just printed labels. Like, allegedly, he just was, like, a guy who... Um, I, I didn't get all the details, but as far as he knows, he just printed, like, product labels. Just being, like, little so pieces like of paper. Yeah, that's what I said. It's like a service or product. I was like, I don't know which one it would be considered. But it's service. like, if you were to sell a bottle and have the ra label that wraps around it, it's like he right. printed that label. But allegedly, he made, like, it was, like, a multi, multi, multi-million dollar business. And it's just kind of like a local business in my town. <laughs> Huh. And you drive by the building, it looks like just a warehouse. Doesn't look like too much. The key he was saying is that you wouldn't imagine too much is going on. And it's like when the guy tells you, he's like, "Oh, I print labels." He's like, "Does he even put them on things?" See, I didn't know all the details. The guy was telling me didn't have all the details. He said it had to do something with like this is this is where like I guess the the unique part comes in. I think it was specifically when like Chinese import. This, I mean, this is vague. This is like a year ago. I was told this. Mm, is he it said it was like Chinese. Stuff? No, he's like Chinese imports were coming in. I think he was creating English labels for Chinese right. products. So it's like companies would contact him. I think he would translate them, print the labels, and ship them. Dude, that's a problem. He made people's problems go away. Like that's but a it serious was, yeah. business. But it's like, it, it's such a weird niche thing. But at the time, it right. was so needed where people went, I have this Chinese product. Uh, I need an English label for right. it. And he would just make the equivalent. Because that's what I think they need it to was. have the art yeah. and the translation. And, it and then they have to and... physically do it here. They have to like, at some point they have to like take the inventory that's yeah. going to America and relabel it. So it's like, if you already have a product and you like have the secondary market that you don't want to deal with, just let someone else do it and pay them so it's like, maybe more money than you should. He made, yeah. He made like the American slash Canadian or Western packaging for it. Um, and I, I mean, it just sounds interesting. He just printed cardboard. Like you know what's funny labels. about that? I feel like to, to run a business like that, you do that's what I heard. a handful of employees. Like that's yeah. probably like a dozen employee company, uh, especially if it's making that much money. If you have enough money where you can build a lake on your property, you probably should just be paying your employees more. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. dude, I'm I'm all aboard hoarding money. Like that's fine. Like hoard your all money. All aboard. Like if you just want to like, keep your the, money and don't want to spend it, that's fine. It's, it's so much hearsay because it's it's. This is like what the guy who I was talking to had pieced together. I believe it 100. percent But he, I he was talking, yeah. believe that story. He was just saying that he'd worked for like a lot of people, and he was always shocked when because he was a contractor or he is a contractor. He said that he would work for like these really nice houses. I was going to say in Westmount. You guys don't know where that is. It's just like the rich area of Montreal. Um, Do you live there? 
No, I do not. <laughs> um, he just said that when you would ask some of them, a lot of them are doctors, lawyers, like standard stuff you'd expect. But he goes, you'd occasionally get, he goes, the really, really rich people that he would ask what they do would just always be something obscure. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's, dude, they probably made a weird problem go away that no yeah, one else he, had thought of. Like he said, the, he goes, you get to the other guys, they have like, you know, beautiful houses. What do you do? Oh, we're like cardiac surgeons. Yeah. Uh, we're like neurosurgeons. Oh, the cool makes sense. Then it's like this really rich guy. What do you do? Oh, we print labels. What? Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, you're the really rich I guy? Sell, I sell my farts in a jar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you start getting the weird niche businesses at the top. So with I, the dude, septic company, how much... You know, I paid 500 bucks for that service. It took about an hour. Yeah. yeah. How much do you think Did that you the employee got paid? I had to make an appointment, yeah. Okay, so I that means that, that employee is going job to job to job. Yes. And it took I, him one hour. They and still pay them, at least when the guy who, when one of the co another contractor told me his cousin did it, I think he was making like in Canadian 100 and, I think he said he's making like 150 plus, like K a year. I... Well, At, like no, but like he was, he's running his own business too. He just started right. it, I think. Well, but yeah, but I'm like, talking about if you work for a big company, you know, I they, you, pay, they definitely pay you more. You're definitely on the uh, you're not on the pay higher pay wage. scale. Yeah, I would minimum say minimum plus one dollar. If I was starting, like I, I was I, when I worked in a machine shop, and this was like you know maybe five years ago or six, no, maybe more eight years ago, I was getting paid like sixteen bucks an hour, and that was like pretty mm. good. Um. If I was to do that, you need quite a bit of skill. Like that's definitely not a job that you just throw somebody into because well, there's like insurance. Septic tanks are dangerous and, too, right? Yeah, there's definitely some protocols and in insurance that's gonna like cause problems. So, and training. And so having someone that does a good job and like doesn't piss your customers off by covering their lawn and shit. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, the guy does the an error and he shoots all the septic tank back into your house. <laughs> I don't think it's that complicated of a job. The check bounce. Kevin, Kevin. I don't think it's complicated. But, but Kevin, is that possible? Yeah, so from what I'm looking up online, I typed in septic Could he technician. push enough water through to send the septics to all the condoms That would back be in. epic. <laughs> Geyser status. There's definitely a switch that you turn to probably make the pump just run literally backwards. I don't think... I, I doubt <laughs> there's another was, Yeah, he was like pumping water into the it goes septic back tank. into your house. But it was like dirty water. It was like uh, already mixed. He's like, yeah, it's mixed but Kevin, this is all so it's your not chunky dirt. anymore. Does that make it better that it's your dirt? No. Is it more gross that it's your like? Is it more Will's gross? pooped in my toilet before. Sorry? That was some, you know. <laughs> yeah, but is it more gross if you have to deal with your own waste? It's just as gross. Or I don't care whose it is, it's, <laughs> or if it's somebody. It's, I'm it's gonna peak say gross. <laughs> once you've been sitting in a tank for that long, it it's, doesn't it's, matter. It's like the it's, same thing, and it's just disgusting. Like your body is is like giving you wait, all wait, these so signals. So you tell me there's a time run. limit. So if it's fresh in that, it's it's better than Honestly, sitting in the like, tank. I would I would rather clean up a fresh poop on the carpet. <laughs> yeah. yeah from like my dog, hypothetically. Yeah. <laughs> you have to specify, not from. Uh, <laughs> you it's have nice. to specify uh, your dog. Okay, anyway, it says twenty twenty dollars an hour, twenty, twenty five bucks an hour. That's <laughs> average average septic technician salary is like forty forty to sixty K a year. That seems like on the low end of what I would be okay with. <laughs> like yeah. I think that that's one of those jobs where there's gonna be like a premium tacked onto it. Like and <laughs> This happens say, with okay. everything. Any trade depends, job you you get, yeah. you know, a plumber, an electrician, a mechanic, you know, they only make, you know, whatever the hourly rate the business charges. They probably make like 30% of that, maybe 50%. And the rest of that goes to the company. And yeah. it's because yeah. when you run a company like this, there's something called, you know, you've heard of the economies of scale. There's also the diseconomies of scale. And when you start expanding like this, you know, you have to start charging more because you're doing all these things. You need insurance for the drivers. Right. You need cars for the drivers. You need equipment. You need training. Then you, you need, need like somebody in the office to book appointments. Yeah, I was going to say that's the thing. You need the office workers. You need accounting. You need so much other overhead. Yeah. So this, you know, normal job that you're paying, you know, doing yourself. Mm. Suddenly, you want somebody in the office to help you. Then you figure you can hire somebody else. And then next Plus thing you, you know, you have to charge like three to times ship as much. The shit twelve miles off coast so you can <laughs> dump it without having to pay. <laughs> So I don't know. I feel like if you were going to go do one of these jobs, the better way to do it would be to like stay small and charge you need the truck though. The truck is going to cost like a hundred grand. 
Maybe. So why, why do the do people just have septic? Because in my area, we don't have septic tanks. It's called shitty government. So just it's just you just don't have a sewer line like what yeah. I don't actually understand. Yeah, it's like they, they never don't. ran a sewer line. Hmm. I mean, here Maybe they call it works it city better in some sewer. areas than the other because Florida has really sandy soil. Isn't so it like a lot can, of like percolate work to like empty all the tanks? Yeah, you should. They the... say you got to do it like every five years because that's usually when it gets clogged. Wait, every you can hold it for five years? Yeah, it drains. Yeah, it drains into the ground. It's, there's like a multi-stage uh, process. There's like a leech pit, they call it, or something like yeah. that, where like once it's been sitting for long enough, it's considered like safe enough to like slowly It's been like broken down by microbes. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. When we, when my parents, when I was a kid, we moved into um, a house and that uh, almost immediately, I think they realized it or I don't know. I think it was already the septic tank had collapsed. Ugh. And so it was like this big steel tank that had been that had to be like torn out and had to do this whole thing. I just remember it being like an absolute nightmare. Yeah. It's that's like, super huge. expensive too. It's like a room, dude. It's like, it's like a small room underground. Like it's, it's yeah. a go big hang out in there. Tank. Yeah. We have a, a friend. My dad had a friend that, uh, his house got put on city sewer and he like emptied the tank out and like turned it in like a basement, which the guy was kind of crazy, but I feel like that's kind of a bad idea, especially a used tank. But, he actually did that? That's nasty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and yes. I never saw it, but... It's like I mean, if I lived somewhere where I could have an underground room... But could it be I'm... any room other than a used septic tank? Yeah, anything besides that. A shipping container or something. <laughs> Everyone's going to yell at me, oh, you can't bury a shipping container. Yeah. <laughs> I know, well, right? you shouldn't hang out in a septic tank either, guys. <laughs> That's the bar. That We're setting the bar low. Wait, Kevin, I'm going to... I'm going to post a video. This is something I saw years ago. I don't know if it's true or not. You guys can Anyway, when judge. he's posting the video, I want to rant about some more stuff that I got overcharged for. One of them you was an air conditioner. Judge. Recently? I needed a new air conditioner. And I looked online. I'm like, okay, I can buy, I can actually buy the air conditioner unit. You know, three, three ton unit or something like that for like three, four thousand dollars. And then... I called some people and I'm like, hey, can you install this for me? And they said, oh, no, we don't do that. We don't we don't install units supplied by the customer. We supply them and install them ourselves. And, you know, they charge for the install like 10, 12,000 bucks. OK, seven, eight thousand. And I'm like. Why? Why Why don't I just like the premium. Get this unit? Why can't I pay you an hourly fee to install this unit? They want the premium. Yeah, it's wild. Unit. It's be mm -hmm. and they told me it's like, well, when you have a big company like this, you need to, you need insurance, you need vehicles, you need employees. Nobody would do it. Says the man whose boss is building a, a three million gallon lake. I know. <laughs> in front of his house. There's something broken with that. I think you know maybe back in the day it would be good to work for a company like that, but now you just got to be good at like SEO marketing and you can easily mm -hmm. start your own business. So you're just trying to install an AC unit. Yeah. And they're going to charge you 12K to just install it? Yeah, like like 10K. I think That's insane. my bill was, was like seven or $8,000 per air conditioning yeah. unit. That's what we paid. I think we paid yeah. like $10,000. Yeah. Why don't you just install it yourself? You can't. Because you would need like, you know, two or 3,000 bucks of yeah. equipment to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. worth it. No, but then you have to figure out how to do it. You have to learn the whole process. You have to run it. Yeah, it's just I'd like rather one of those pay somebody like, yeah, yeah. 10,000 <laughs> like, bucks to you do get it. Tools. Would, a learning experience. No, that's this is that's that's the line. That is the line There's that I don't want to cross. Experience is what it not... teaches you when you're done installing it, you're like, damn. Now I. If I was doing my own, if I was building I've my own house, I've installed AC before. I could have helped. There you. wasn't drywall on the wall yet. I I might try it. What Running do you mean ducks you've installed and stuff like AC before. Now, I've installed right? AC. You put How? something in the Explain window. Explain the process because do it. this is not just this is like putting a unit down on the ground and then filling the lines with coolant or with yeah. refrigerant. I mean, I didn't do it myself. I helped. Like in our <laughs> house, there's literally there is a water pump that pumps the condensation into the attic and outside. Oh wow! Yeah. Like no, we, there's it was a whole. A, it was a central AC unit, and then I can't. Uh, I kind of messed up though. I I was I was an apprentice. I had I was only one day on the job. Yeah, yeah. How did you mess up? I spilled the uh, pump oil on the guy's patio <laughs> or on the rocks, and it's just like, it does not come out. No. <laughs> was but this for your own place? I was going to come Nigel back with hexanes. Nigel released 4.4 no, cubic for a random guy. metric tons of ozone-depleting refrigerant into the atmosphere. <laughs> no. It was, uh, it was an interesting little... It was years ago. 
My Wait, kids, this is actually a job a fam- you did? Like, well, you were, family you friend were... is an AC a repair slash like installer Scammer. guy. That's like what he does. He just he's an HVAC guy. Does he have a lake in front of his house? <laughs> he does not have a lake. <laughs> uh, my neighbor was an HVAC guy too, so like he's the one who trained my family friend. So it's like does my he dad. Have a lake in I front think. Of his house? I think my no, my dad and him installed the AC on our house. Okay. And anytime it breaks, like they fix it. Do I know how any of it works? No. My dad. I know that every single one is, every single company is owned by one parent company, like Reem, Cool Star, whatever the heck they're called. It's all like one company. They literally come with different badges in the box to put on it. Yeah. It is the it's, it's a such that's a why scam. You don't, the government don't needs pay to look in, into this. Don't pay into it, Kevin. Learn go to HVAC school and learn to install you it yourself. The thing that's life. funniest to me though is like if you're gonna rip customers off by charging them a shit ton of money, like cool, like whatever. But then they still pay their employees like shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but and, like that's if what they paid their nuts. employees, like, then how would they have more money for themselves? To build a lake, I don't know. Exactly. I if just pay- feel like. Ripping people off and paying your customers shit is like, just, come on. <laughs> you can't double dip like that. Right. Y- you can if you want a lake. Let your employees in Kevin. on the ripoff. Kevin, Kevin. I want Kevin. a lake. Imagine this. You wake up, have a morning coffee. You look out your giant, beautiful, lake of sewage perfectly in your front yard clear you window. You your septic tank in three years. <laughs> <laughs> and you but see it doesn't matter because you have 27 toilets to poop in because you're a billionaire. <laughs> exactly. You started pooping in the, the upper part of the toilet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the you go to the next decker. story up. <laughs> yeah, man. You're not thinking. You're not. You're just That's not the thinking servant's enough. problem in the basement. Yeah. Get that. Start. Start the blige pump. I was. Uh, I, I was reading something. I, maybe it was read. I don't remember. Someone was like describing a, a like a podcast they had listened to or something where they were like, if if you give your average person like five million dollars, they're just gonna pound sand and go do things that they want to do, right? For the most part, yeah. If you give Probably. your average person five million dollars, like a responsible person five million dollars, mm. they're gonna go and live the rest of their life doing what they want to do for the most part. I mean, obviously, there's people out there. If they're I stupid, mean, and you give rest them of life for the next couple of years, at least. <laughs> well, that's the thing is like your average person who could ha- like, I feel like your average person could handle five million dollars. I, I think the problem is the but, moment you get five million, you realize that it's not as much as you think it is, because when you buy your like a few fancy cars, right. you buy like some other stuff. Right. You're like, okay. Wait, where's half of my money? I don't think your average your person average means what you think person. average person means. Well, let's, like let's <laughs> say your average the average person, person buys three Ferraris, okay. two <laughs> you're slightly Lamborghinis, above average person. And a you're $10 slightly million your house, average. And now they're slightly nothing. above average person. <laughs> if you give them five million dollars, I would just say as someone who is m- more responsible and less <laughs> impulsive. <laughs> Okay, someone who is not like who has an ordinary job and has a retirement account and mm. has an understanding of how long it's going to take for them to retire. It's like my brother. You give him five million dollars, he would have whatever he has now plus five million in the bank. That's yeah. That's the big. That's his. His life is the same. His bank account just has a extra digit. I think that the the general idea of this thought experiment is that if you give your average person five million dollars. And if they're not going to screw it up, they're going to go do just whatever they want. They're not necessarily mm. going to try to make more money. Okay, that's what you mean. Yeah, like yeah. they're not going to, they're 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 going to try to live off what they have. They're not going to try to turn it into ten. Right. Why? Yeah. Because like, if you like your 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 slightly above average person is going to recognize that this five million dollars is not amazing because it's a lot of money. It's amazing because it means they don't have to work anymore. I said. So I why would you turn that, that sorry, into I, more work for yourself? I saw right. you know by trying to if start a business. If you get five million dollars and you somehow make it so that you still have to work, you are an idiot. So what I saw a terrible meme. I forget where it was. It's like it's all memes it's, are terrible. No, it's one of the grind memes. It's like if someone were to give me it's like some amount of money, like five million dollars. Yeah. The what I'd immediately do, do you see this? Is give it to my worst enemy. <laughs> it's because <just, laughs> that way it would drive me to make more than him. Then you That's can't a, post more Sigma male memes on Facebook. It's like it's like the dumbest thing. Your whole ever. identity like you give is it away so that you'd be motivated to make more than five million. I that has to be just like no, a it's, joke. It's, it has to be, but it's just so dumb. It's like, or you can just keep it and invest it. 
Oh my god, okay, Nigel, so I just saw this here, video you posted. <laughs> Kevin, here's what I, I I'm trying to say it. that this other person was trying to say that I read someone else say about mm. this person saying. Okay. If you give somebody $5 million and you help them understand how to use it responsibly, they're just going to piss off and they're just going to do things they want. They can yeah, travel, probably. they can buy a house. They like, you know, if, if there's something that's too expensive for them, they need to just change their goals because mm. you can pretty much buy anything if you have $5 million. All the experiences well, that I you mean, actually want. Can't get, come you can't on, buy anything and everything. You can't get but, a plane. You can't get any of the good yachts. Like, what's the point? Right. That, why, why, but if somebody the, gave you $5 million, you should be able to figure out how to be able to not work for the rest of your life and still live pretty well. I mean, yeah. And the, well, the, the point where this is going is that anyone, anyone mm -hmm. who gets $5 million and then keeps trying to make more money than that, there's something definitely a little bit wrong with them. I feel so in my case, I feel like if I got <laughs> five mil, I would be that person. But it's not because I want to make more money. Because you've had like an idea that you've always wanted to try. Yeah, to do. it would be more like I now have the capital to do something I want to do that's big. Correct. I think what this is getting at though is someone whose only enjoyment is making money because that's all they know how to do. Where it's like mm. there's not something that they want to do. Oh what yeah. What they want to do is to grow the pile bigger. And so I think like this like it's hard to it's like how do you articulate this in a way where it's like if you give somebody five million dollars, they should be able to if they're not a complete idiot and not six million dollars in debt they should be able to take that five million dollars and live the rest of their life doing whatever they want and that's i think what most people would do as long as they didn't mess it up mm -hmm. like if you took the five million dollars and you essentially figured out a plan for them where you gave them x amount of dollars per month and if they still at the end of the month had to go get a job for the next month they're an idiot if that's yeah. does that make sense i'm not so i'm not you, debating that so if you get five million dollars and you have a mentality where you still try to make more money, there's definitely a reevaluation that needs to happen because you really don't need more than that. So why are you trying to make more? Are you trying to make, like build a lake in front of your house? Yeah, dude, if the, the lake's three million, account? you can't spend half your money on it. I guess, I guess that's the thing is like, I think what the, what, the, what the post was trying to say that I agree with is that a lot of people You're who try to make more money aren't actually trying to do something they want to do. They're just the only thing they know how to do is make so more money. Like that's I, the feedback loop they're in is like make I, more money, make more money, make more money, make I more money. I would qualify what you're saying is like, I think what you're saying is once you get given that much money, what you should be doing is you should be having like, because obviously let's say you're making like five, five K a year, you know, on the total polar right. um, other end. It makes sense that your goal is to make more because every extra dollar you make will have like a great impact on your life. Correct. But it's Correct. like once you get to five million, it's like your Correct. goals should shift because every extra dollar has no impact, really. A negligible impact on your life. Correct. So it's like you are, it's like if your goals don't shift, and kind of like I said, if I have a big project to work on that I've always wanted to do, that's not to make more money. That's to do things you want to do. Yeah. Right. So it's like if you're not shifting to that, then like you said, you have some sort of problem because you're, you're stuck in some weird mindset where you think the number means something and it's no right. longer attached to like your quality of life. It's like some Correct. weird, just it's like it a just, dopamine feedback loop where like, that's your goal for the day. Like look at like Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Like hmm. how is that? Like, look at like, <laughs> I don't I get that. that. I don't get that. There's the two social medias. There's <laughs> MySpace. So you have Tom from MySpace who, do you know what that guy does now? Why? I don't know. Oh, he travels. This guy he, lives like, the life. He like pissed off with his MySpace money <laughs> and he travels and he has this like photography Instagram mm. account where he like posts really good pictures yeah. that he takes. He's, he's doing it right. What, yes. is, what are you doing, Mark Zuckerberg? Why are you, right. are you still exactly working? That's what I've right. wondered. Like, he, like, is this like? Do you actually enjoy running this horrible company? <laughs> Brain worms. That's what. That's what, what it is. is. So, it's like. Did you see the video when he? Um, I'm sorry, Mark, if you're watching this. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, yeah. Did you beep, see the video boop, boop, with him beep, where he's like, beep, boop, he's advertising? Beep, 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 I just say okay, that because didn't it, him and like Gary V do a Riverside chat or something? So we're on Riverside, and I'm like, Mark. Mark, did actually? Just, that's what's on the main page. Either way, that's totally aside. Uh, he did like a he. When they did their, he announced their collaboration with Ray Bans, mm -hmm. and I'm just, he's just like, it's this new revolutionary thing with like Ray Bans, and I'm just like, why Every are you doing that? Like, why, like, just on, add it to the pile. I'm just like, but why are you excited about this? Who's, who's Gary V? 
Oh, we don't need, don't, need, don't need to get into that. It's probably better that you don't know. I don't Gary really Van know, but I know Banner that I Shock. don't want more You could just do it. He made do, Ray-Bans? No, no, no. No, it's, I think he's like a horrible motivational speaker thing. Like it's, one of, it's almost like the Minion meme except for people. All right. <laughs> He ba- yeah, he's it. basically a motivational speaker slash business slash, I don't know. I actually don't know too much. I just know that Riverside was advertised as, I think, Gary V talking to Mark. You know, like the, uh, the, yeah, I'm not on the, front page the right mega now. church pastors. Yeah. He's like that, but for motivational speakers. But I, <sighs> I think the difference is that he actually does have, <laughs> he's not, he isn't just spewing rent. No, no. I don't. I've literally only seen the clips that people have made fun of him for, so I have a very, yeah. very, very bad idea of what he does. But I'm saying that from the gist that I get is that he does. Unlike I'm saying that the some of the preacher people or other people who just kind of like spew com- absolute nonsense. It's right. just like there's at least. Like, I think he does know what he's doing. It's just that you can argue that the stuff he says, like to get motivated kind of doesn't help a lot right. of people because that oftentimes it's like people want to start a YouTube channel and it's like telling the person all this motivational stuff doesn't necessarily really, it gets them started, but it doesn't truly help them. Um, yeah. Like you can't I just, just think- yell at a guy enough and get him motivated enough to start a business. It doesn't make it successful. I just think the irony of it is it's like how many, like, like someone like that makes a lot of money, right? Like if you have yeah. that big of a platform and you're like, you're motivating people to make money. I feel like what he does. I actually don't yourself, know anything about him. The only motivation you have is to like make more money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like once you yeah. get past a certain threshold, like you can't be a motivational speaker and not have money. Right. Your motivation can't be making more money. That's that's insane. I think that's the point. Is it sort of shows like, like how is that fulfilling? Like what's <laughs> where's the fulfillment? So in- I read uh, his on Wikipedia re- under reception. It says. Uh, he has earned social uh, social media following around mentorship. However, critics have called him a snake oil salesman. <laughs> That's it. That's the whole yeah. line. And so now it's like you have someone who already who's like like if he's at this position, there's no way he's not successful already. Yeah. Right. So he has to have money. John, what up, man? It's Gary V. Listen. What you, is that you watching a video? How come no, we're here watching Gary V? I'm so is that motivated. On an external speaker. So. I think this is like this is like the interesting thing is like you have somebody who makes a bunch of money in air quotes potentially doing snake oil but then continues to s- the same practices of potentially maybe selling snake oil I think- to motivate people to make more money. You see what I'm saying where it's like it's like if you want to scam people and then you've made money you've made your money. But why do I, you have to yeah, keep yeah, scamming? I, them? I, like I you've I already think gotten at least the diff the difference is i think i'm reading his wiki page i think he had he did get success in business before doing the mentoring stuff so it's like i'm just saying that some of the people who are like the motivational speakers it's kind of like that like you said that weird circular loop where it's like well what do they do well they have a great they have a huge history of motivation good motivational speeches and you're like that they, like, they, what are their actual qualifications it's like their qualifications the are that they they they're they're rich from motivational right. speaking and that's why people go to that's see why, them it's like this weird loop but i think he actually did have business experience so i'm saying that he might have like motivational fluff that might not be that helpful but it's right. like at, i mean it may not make it better but it's like at least he does have business experience i don't know if that makes any difference but doesn't to be it honest. scare you a little bit that there's someone who's like giving motivational like speaking advice but has already succeeded and it's like then all they they do is they keep doing the same thing and it's like is he doing it because he thinks he's helping people like probably I'd like not, to see him start another thing. business right and to if to i had one that question that i could it. ask like mark zuckerberg i'd be like hey like uh why do you still work at facebook like why do you show up to the office every day that's what I don't get. That's my question. It's like, why do you still do that? Because, you know, everyone, I think, collectively agrees that Facebook has like a negative impact on society. So now it's like it's almost the opposite of charity, right? Where it's like you're building this machine. Actually, I understand which, it. I understand. What? I will explain to you. This is my dissertation <laughs> on Mark Zuckerberg that I wrote right okay. now. So we have to, to do this. We have to go back to where Facebook started. No, I'm not going to tell the whole story. <laughs> oh, we're getting. Basically. Okay. Good old, <laughs> just gonna tell a whole story that's bad <laughs> fake. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> it's I'm ready. it's, ba- it's based on loosely us. on the time that I half watched the what's that movie with uh, Justin Timberlake? The um, 
social network. Journey social, to the center of the earth. The social network or whatever. Oh. Um, back when he, what campus was he on? Oh God, was it M Harvard? One of those, whatever. <clears throat> he went you to see something. He was he was in a university, a, a college. He was in a school, and um, okay, I don't even know where I'm going. With this basically, he was a young twenty something year old who allegedly borrowed the idea from two other people, those twins. Oh, I think it was MIT. And turned it into the social network. I think that, like, Facebook is kind of... Because when, you, when you're going through the ages of, like, 18 to, like, 25, I feel like you really... That's where you kind of get your grasp of who and what you are. Um, and he, I think he grew with Facebook. So I think now that he's, like, 30... I don't know how old he is. It's like... If he left Facebook, who is he? That's everything he is. A rich man. No, but do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who he, cares? Uh, but Kevin, he you probably know? isn't like you. He doesn't have. I'm, I'm actually this, this is a total lie. I've seen him He's surfing with the American different. flag. I've seen him cooking ribs. I take this back. He has a lot of hobbies. Um, He's an all American homeboy. But I'm just saying that, like, I do understand to a certain degree because I feel a bit the same about the YouTube stuff. Is like, if I ever were to be like, I'm not doing YouTube anymore. I feel like because I started it when I was like 23, it's kind of weird. It's like, this is everything I know. And part of what keeps me here is because it's part of my identity. It's like what I do now. I can't remember, I mean, I, I can't remember a time I didn't do YouTube. So I feel YouTube like that could be a driving factor. But not nearly as stressful as he probably has it. I know. I'm just saying though that that's, he's probably in this thing where it's like he could walk away, but then what? So you're saying Mark Zuckerberg is Facebook? Pro he, he, it has to be bound to him psychologically in some way. So he's like, Mark Zuckerberg is like in the Matrix when they stick like the probe into <laughs> yeah. your like brain stem. We should get him on this he's podcast like, <laughs> and ask him. If we got Mark on this podcast, we should send out a formal invitation. He would never do that. Why? He would never do that. Because, like, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't like... I'm you just know, joking. If, no, but I think that would be... like I would love to talk to like any of these people like i would love Same. to be able to just ask somebody these sorts Mark, of like why weird questions. are you like, still running facebook <laughs> there's a couple people like they would never say this publicly but like just for my own curiosity like i've I, i've met people um in real life that i have not directly asked questions but like there's sort of been like you know very very close mm. acquaintances that i've asked you know kind of like these personal questions about how they know this person like very like high profile people and asking questions about like oh like like how did they change when they got a bunch of money like how do you go mm. from having you know you know just being a kid to being like you know like multi-million hundred well, not even multi-million but like hundred millionaire like or, or billionaire kind of mm. situation where it's like you know like that is that is so much money that you can't even begin to like describe how much money that is like the number means nothing you know like it essentially turns like if you go out to dinner with your friends and dinner each person's dinner costs a hundred dollars that's like not even pennies to you so it's like it wouldn't even be worth your time to pick up a penny off the ground but then you still make your friends pay for food even though it's zero dollars to you essentially you know what i'm saying like those kinds of weird situations where money is so like like untangible at that point because it's like you have so much of it um like how does that change a person and i think like the answer that i got was essentially just made people like their eccentricities, like they just became more eccentric, like their weird quirks just became more exaggerated and like not always for the better. I have a comment um, too. Are yeah. we, are you, are you done? Or? Well, I mean, mm. it, it also sort of, I think made people like, you know, less willing, like, like people became less interested in more in mundane things and mm. more mundane people. So like, you know, for example, if someone made a bunch of money that you were friends with, they kind of would slowly creep away from you, if that makes sense. Like that you would become sort of less interesting or less valuable to them. Um, and it might not always be like that, but I think that there is like, you, like you have less in common with them now. Mm. Yeah, that's, I would you say know? it's more of that than anything else. You know, you don't, you're, you're doing your own thing. You know, you might not, you might not have time to go to the same grocery store as them anymore. Or like, you're not they living in the, the apartment store. complex, going to the same sports. But I think that there is just a natural, like, drifting. I think even so. One thing I was gonna say about just, um, uh, like, making the money. I think there's also a difference. We can get back to this, but it's like there's a difference of how quickly you make the money. Like, if you made a hundred million dollars right. over ten years, where the first year you made, let's say, ten k, the next year you made like. 
50 or 100. Then the next year you made like 300. And they like you tripled and then went up kind of exponentially. I feel like you're much more well adapted than if you just made all that money all at once. Worse. I think I think getting it all at once would be better because you it would force so? you to have like a hard evaluation because you'd have to sit there and you're like, here is me right now. I don't know. I feel like a lot what of people... What is me in the future? I feel like it's... Some... I, I, I'm also different though. I feel mm. like I, the way I perceive everything is like I'm very future paranoid. Like I'm constantly looking into the future mm. of like, you know... Like what would make me comfortable is like okay how like if I want to retire with this much money how much money do I, I think I feel like we probably talked about this before and the, the last time we talked about money when people yelled at us, um, like how do I make sure that I'm going to be able to like not have to work every single day for the rest of my life kind of thing like that's kind of what gives me security mm-hmm. it's like like past William is usually pretty good to future William like ninety percent of the time usually um, usually and so. I feel like if, if you just got presented the situation of like, all right, cool, you just, you know, either won the lottery or someone bought your company for an obscene amount of money. And you're like, all right, I have this X amount of dollars. And it's like, you know, I mean, 100 million is like, that's a crazy number, right? Like, that's an insane amount of money. Um, I think that you could pretty quickly try to establish some like baseline. Whereas if you made money slowly, you're going to like become maybe numb to it and almost have completely maybe forgotten where you came from. And like forget about how much money you actually have. Yeah, but I mean, give what ten years of anybody's life, what's gonna be the same as it was ten years ago? Not right. much. Right. But if you give them a bunch of money and it's like a slow transition, they're gonna sort of like forget about that. Cause you do forget about it. Like you forget about, you know, the problems you had as a kid. Like I remember going to get food as a kid in like high school. And we went to like California Pizza Kitchen and I got a, a, a pizza and it was like $14. And I was like, oh shit. Like I spent way, like I should not have done that. Like, I mean, that that's normal though. I mean, I right. think everybody goes through that for the most part. Like, you know, you're a poor right. college kid or like a poor teenager. But it's easy to forget Then you get your first that. job and suddenly like, oh wow, you can afford the 50 bucks a year for your Xbox Live membership. Right. right. Whereas like when you were eight years old, that was a ton of money. Right. But you're talking but about people like if it's like, like multiples like, order right, magnitude or with, difference. Yeah, like it's it's it just I don't know. It's hard. I feel like it's one of those things that's very difficult to like for people to like to explain or to try to understand if you haven't like experienced it or seen it. Um, and that's why I would like that's the question I would love to ask somebody like Mark Zuckerberg is like, why do you still work at Facebook? Or you know, because like even Elon Musk, like I feel like Elon Musk is is closer to us in the sense of like. He has these big ideas and it seems to be like, it seems to be less about money and more about like, he's got these crazy, you know, like he wants to do rocket stuff. He wants to do, you know, like electric vehicles. It's like, it's almost like he has like motivations. Yeah. He's got Um, all these pet projects he's working on. He's making progress. It's, you know, he's like actively doing things and moving forward. Right. And look at Bezos, like with the, you know, the giant yacht. Yeah. What is he doing? No, that's just Wait, are you criticizing Mark Rober's? Like collaboration with Ray Bans, Mark Rober's. Oh my God, Mark Zuckerberg's <laughs> collaboration with Ray Bans. Are you kidding why they, me? Why would they even do that, dude? It's crazy, man. You can use Facebook on your your glasses now. I actually oh, don't remember what this what is it about. Was. I didn't hear that. It was just that you watch it and you're just like, why? You didn't see What's it. A, I want a, a Facebook collaboration with a toilet porcelain toilet company so I can make a post of a shit every Here, time I'll I take you a, a thing. shit. It was like. Ray-Ban smart glasses so that you can... Ray-Ban like, stories? I want the new Facebook toilet where it's got a so camera. It just with takes Facebook's a, app so you can share your point of view. I want everyone to see what disaster I live in my toilet every day on my Facebook wall. It's like it's, it's kind of interesting as like a thing, like having cameras in your glasses. Like it's not like the worst thing ever. Um, but it's just the idea where it's like... The, I, first of all, I don't know Tied who on Facebook. their PR team was like, you know what, Mark, you should present this. It was one of the weirdest presentations, <laughs> like at the very beginning. Okay, I have a, I, here's here's like like, if someone gave you five million dollars, what would you decide to do? Go and and, and have would, an adventure and, of your life, no, no, or no, would no, you no. go and start a business to try to make more money? Me, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. I would invest it in stuff for myself. To do what you for want my to own do. happiness, which like, does yeah, not Kevin, include Kevin. What makes you making happy? Making a business, I would buy a big house uh, in a neighborhood with not a lot, with no people, <laughs> and yeah. a lot of trees, and a lot of machinery, and a lot of dirt bikes, and, and a lake, perhaps. 
oh, it's going to have a lake for sure with a secret underground room. It's going to be like a dome room where you can look <laughs> that's up epic. and see the poop floating Dude, by. Kevin's the guy that you want to give $100 million for. <laughs> no, but that's, that's epic. I would go there. And I can just see, I tell you, Kevin's property would be that run, like the weird thing where it's like you find out Kevin's a multimillionaire and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. This, he drives. Like Kevin's all dirty with like grease all over him. There's just like half. But I'm like, taken, let me show you the submarine. There's just like half taken <laughs> apart motors covered in grease and engine parts and it's just it's yeah. <laughs> half projects yeah. Listen, done everywhere. I'm feeling a little attacked right now. No, I'm saying it's good. <laughs> it means that like you, you have hobbies dude, and you even, know what okay. you like. Even if you did I all know. that, like I don't think that you could figure out like how do you how do you live that lifestyle but also like spend a hundred million dollars like i don't think you could you can't it. no like i think you unless can't. you start buying like planes yachts yeah. and all that like really over the top things it's like if you the, live if you want to live a, like a lifestyle and still have a connection with the like with someone who's remotely still has like if you want to stay in touch with reality right right, right. um did we ever talk about helicopters did we ever talk about maybe that maybe vaguely the helicopter economy. Did I ever share my research into helicopter economy? I think you <sighs> you must have mentioned. I feel like, like you did, but if, if we forgot, mm. we could use a refresher. Okay. If we can't remember, go for it. I, so here's here's an example of of like uh, money um, and what it can buy you and how little that amounts to. So like I uh, last year took a bunch of helicopter lessons. I've got like 15 hours, and boy, by God, our helicopter lessons are expensive. It's like five hundred dollars an hour. So I think I spent a total of like maybe seven thousand no, dollars. You said five hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. So it's basically every time you do it, it's like five hundred bucks. Mm. Um, and that's in an R forty four, which is like one of the like cheapest helicopters you can get. And so I started looking into the practicality of buying a helicopter because I was like, you know, I just like who doesn't love the idea of like a plane or a helicopter and whatnot? Do I have to, yeah. do I have to explain myself? Like it's a freaking helicopter. Like eat my ass. Um, and you can buy an R44 for about $200,000. That's like bottom of the barrel. So like long story short, the way that helicopters work is they're rated for flight time. And specifically Robinsons, which like on the, the low end of helicopters, which are like your hobby helicopter, they're rated for flight time, also age. And so you don't have to keep track of parts or anything. It makes it much simpler where it's like either uh, it's 2,200 hours or 12 years, I think. Whichever Something comes like first. Whichever comes first. So if you hit 2,200 hours, helicopter's done. The helicopter needs to go through a whole rebuild process, which costs like 150 to $200,000 or something insane like that. Maybe more. Um, if you hit the, uh, the time, if you hit the 12 years before burning through 2,200 hours, it's done. Helicopter's done. You got to go through the whole rebuild process. And so if you want to buy a helicopter, the cheapest helicopters to get are the ones that don't have a whole lot of time on them because even if they've got a bunch of hours, you can't use them. And so you can get like a pretty good helicopter for a pretty good price. And it turns into like maybe a quarter of a million dollars. So let's say you can buy a helicopter for a quarter of a million dollars. Like what does the fuel cost? What does the insurance cost? What does the, and like at the end of the day, if you burn through every single last hour in this helicopter as a, like to get all your hours done, you, the lowest you can get your hourly cost down to is like 200 maybe $200 an hour. So every hour that you sit in this helicopter costs you $200. And that's yeah. if you use all the hours. So that's $200 times 2,200 hours. What's that work out to? I don't know. It's a Four, freaking shit. 440,000? Yeah. And so then you start thinking about like, okay, well, how does helicopter, how do helicopters actually work? And it's like, well, if you have one, you park it somewhere. So like, let's see, you have a place, like your house, you could park it at your house, you know, if you can land there. And then it's like, okay, well, what, how do you get into it? And it's like, well, you get in an helicopter, you like, you turn it on, you like do your inspection. And it's like, this all takes like 10 to 15 minutes. And then you like turn it on, you let it warm up. Like there's this whole checklist you're supposed to go through if you don't want to die. Um, and even then you still might die. And then you like, you fly to where you want to go, but the max speed of the helicopter is like 150 miles an hour, maybe like 200 miles an hour or something like that, maybe 150 knots. I don't know exactly what it was. So it's not even that fast. Like it's pretty fast, but it's not that fast. And then when you get to where you want to go, guess what? You have to land. Like where can you land? Like where the hell can you land? Anywhere you want. You're in a helicopter. Yeah. Like there's only one way to do that though, is if you're, if you have an emergency, you can land anywhere you want technically. But if you, if you, you can't like land in a parking over, lot. You can't Walmart. land in a parking lot. You cannot do that. If you do that, you will get in trouble unless you say, like, my oil light was on or some bullshit. But even then, they'll be mad and all the rocks that were flung at cars around you will... You can will, land at your will. other rich friend's house. Right. And so, like, what ends up happening is you have this vehicle that is 
very expensive and almost completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and don't like, a lot of people just kind of rent them out? Like they have the helicopter. They, they use it sometimes, but other times they're leasing yeah. it out to like other people as they, like a taxi. I think people do like timeshares or, or something where they like, they'll like go in on a helicopter or they'll, you know, like you can rent one from like the school I was taking lessons that you can rent them. And that's the right way to do it. But it just like, it's like that's what people spend their money on when they have too much of it. They buy this thing which doesn't even solve any of their problems. It, like, literally, it burns money. Yes. It's, it's just, just a toy. I like, mean, dude, it's fun if to you fly a go, helicopter. It is. It, that's it. It's just a toy, though. But like if you want to go from like, you know, let's say you, you want to you need to fly to LAX, like you're taking a plane somewhere. The amount of time that it takes to get from the local airport, like from your house to LAX in a helicopter will be just as long, if not slower than just driving to LAX because of yeah. the time it takes to start the helicopter up, the time it takes to like take off and do this. Like one of the lessons I did, uh, I had them pick me up from Santa Barbara airport because I was coming back from somewhere. I don't remember. I think it was maybe your house, Kevin in Florida. And it took like 10 minutes for air traffic to let us take off. A helicopter is either a very specialized tool or a recreational vehicle. Yeah. Like there's no in between. Yep. That's it. It's like a shuttle. Like I guess maybe a, like shuttling somebody to to and from an airport. If your like time is case. worth thousands of dollars an hour, like you're some CEO or something, like, okay, maybe. Like if you're Elon Musk, like Yeah, but then maybe it's it almost like sense. it's a company thing. And right. it's not even an individual thing. Right. So still it's like it that's a tool to get people yeah. somewhere really fast. Yeah. And that's to me, that's like, that's the kind of thing that when you, if you have a bunch of money, you buy a helicopter, it doesn't actually solve any of your problems. Yeah. It just costs money. It's just a Yeah, it's like an RV. Money. It's yeah, like now so, everything's yeah, exactly. a huge hassle. You got to plan right. where you're going to go. Yeah. Do they have hookups? You... Right. It ends up like you get to the campsite and they're like, all the spots are taken. <laughs> yeah. You can't go off-roading with it. Yeah. Like it, it is so painful. And it's like, you, like... That's that goes back to like if you had five million dollars, you could buy a helicopter, but it wouldn't make your life any better. Like mm -mm. it would just be a toy. You should just rent one at that point. I think you could do it and and break even by like renting it out or something like that. But you wouldn't even get to use it yeah, yourself. Now you're like running much a business, then. like you just rent someone else's. What do they say? You don't want a boat. You want a friend with a boat. Yeah, I don't know. I bet like if if you, there's no way you could spend as much money as it would cost you to own a helicopter like if you yeah. just wanted to go rent it and fly it like every weekend no, you couldn't no way so let's say if it costs if it costs you like i think it was a little bit less expensive to rent so let's say it's like 450 dollars an hour so if a helicopter ends up at the end of the day it costs you like two hundred thousand dollars like down the drain um because you can sell the core which is like the helicopter that needs to be rebuilt and you take two hundred thousand dollars divided by uh let's say 20, it'd be like a thousand hours it's like 400 hours like dude like oh, oh man you but like <laughs> that means you'd have to fly like you know an hour and a half every single day for a whole year <laughs> uh-huh like dude after an hour flying a helicopter you're like toasted it's a lot of work that's a lot that's a lot of flying and and like, then, you know you could just rent it your yeah, entire life it. and you would be spending the same amount as somebody who has to like then, then you got, then you're like you obligated money, to, no, you, to you're use spend it if you less. bought it. Guaranteed, you'll you'll spend less money. Get, yep, totally. Because if you 100%. have it, you're obligated to use it because yeah. it's burning money sitting there, yeah. and it's burning money if you're using it. Uh huh. It's, Man, it's helicopters sort of really are a trap. It, that they is really, the worst. It sucks, dude. It sucks. So like, I, I went from being super excited about it and like doing all this research and being on like these forums looking. Yeah, for you used made ones. like a simulator. Yeah. You know, yeah, joysticks. Yeah, yeah. I have. You made me one. Yeah, Here you haven't spoken about it in a long time. The, the what? Helicopters. The excitement just died. Well, it sort of died a little bit when I realized that the whole thing was essentially pointless <laughs> and that anyone who has a helicopter just has too much money and should have donated it to a food kitchen. I guess if you want, <laughs> want to drive a helicopter a lot, get a job. Join the Navy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, and then you yeah. can burn I mean, the taxpayer really money. Because <laughs> yeah. then it pays for your training and you, you can have a job, job doing helicopters for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. Mm-hmm. I just maybe, think like maybe now it isn't the best time to enlist, but no, I just imagine like to myself, like, okay, like if that's really expensive and it doesn't seem like it's worth it, like what are things out there that you could even spend a bunch of money on that would be worth it? I mean, I still think my, uh, I double down. I, I remember last time I didn't, I said I would turn down the hundred million dollars. Yeah. I told you what I would do now. I talked a bunch about it recently. Open source software. 
Oh yeah, like the, the 3D modeling. Yeah. I think that'd be the best way to spend money. That's it's a like noble pursuit. I think yeah, I think that it's like it's almost one of those things too where it's like a challenge where you can sort of make this tool that you want. Dude. And then it's like, what am I gonna do? Build a business around it? Like hell no, I can just pay people. You pay people to to you know develop this thing. And it's just like Blender. It's just there. Like you can just use it if you want to use it. Watch me. Oh, watch me like, open up Fusion this? 360. This is me. Watch me open up Fusion 360. Oh God, these screen records never work. Watch, watch God, Fusion just take a fat mess. dump. Every time I start it, if this happens, maybe somebody who knows in two weeks from now, they'll be able to tell me how to fix this. But I've been trying to do something for my video all day today and I've uninstalled it. I've reinstalled it. Nothing. Do you see this? Is, your, is my screen, do you see this? I'm just waiting for Kevin's whole computer to blue screen right now. Did you see it? Like everything turned black though? Oh yeah. Okay. So now watch. What would you do in this scenario? It Power doesn't even cover. matter. It closed. Use uh, what was the other one? Use um. No, that's so much worse. No, solid it's not. edge. Solid edge. It is. It is definitely kind of shit, but it's still powerful. Use FreeCAD. So anyway, I was telling. I'm just, <laughs> this was an example of how bad software is, and Will so wants just to make it better. Open Fusion 360, and your webcam just crapped out. You're like killing your computer right now. Uh, yeah, that was uh, my camera. Nigel, you look like you're dying on the inside. Yeah, there you go. I say that and then you smile. I'm typing and I'm, I'm angry. What are you mad at? Uh, basically, I mean, l not to get into too many details. I bought it. I bought some software. Yeah. Um, from a website. Does it make you want to make open source version of it for free? No, I bought it. I bought a, so a software from a website, and then when I booted it up, it was the 2019 version, but the current version is 2022. Okay. So I emailed them, which was already a pain to even find out how, saying like, hey, why is this a three-year-old version? It's like you can buy the current version for the exact same price on the company's website. I was buying it through a different website, and they're like, sorry, we, uh, we can't refund you because uh, all the tech specs were there. It's not. It's not on the page at all. It doesn't say that you're buying a three-year-old version. So I finally That's found annoying. a page to complain Kevin, to them. Kevin, turn your screenshot. Get off, get off Discord, yeah. Kevin. I finally found a page. Oh, God, I've been busted. <laughs> I found a page to complain to them. So I wrote a complaint email. I click submit. It goes, sorry, you've, you've been idle too long. You must log in again. So I log in. It goes, okay, you can type your message. It just deleted the message. <laughs> so we'll tell us about... Rage. That sucks, Nigel. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin's like, that sucks. That's anyway, moving I'm sorry. on. No, I feel like I cut off Will and then... We were getting, we got too sidetracked. What? I was just raging oh, because remember. you were gone, so I had to fill the space with emotion. I'm just with, talking with about anger. people who make. If, so, if like you in the chat window person. on the website, it says you've been inactive for too long. While you were waiting for him to fix your problem. No, 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 like you log into the website. They make you log in before you write your complaint email. But we started the podcast, and then I just clicked the button. I saw it, and I realized I only had, like, a sentence to write. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to write this last sentence and say thank you. So I did, but when I hit, like, submit, oh, it said, sorry, you haven't, you've haven't. you been logged out. So then when I logged back in, it was a blank page and said, please write your message. And I'm like, really? Oh, my God. I hate I always, that. I, I always, always copy and paste I normally click Control-A, Control-C, yeah. but I was like, you know what? They won't be this bad. Yep, and they were. Sometimes yeah. it saves it. I don't know how, how it works, but you can hit back and it'll still be there typed I in. I tried. It didn't work. I'm just sad. And sometimes Companies it doesn't make it work. a lot easier to, for you to give them money than for them to give you your money back. Sorry? Companies make it a lot easier to take, oh, yeah. like, for you to no, give I money might, to them than for I them might to have give to your money I might have to do a chargeback on them to get my money back. Like, it's so dumb. Yeah. What was the software? Uh, Mocha Pro. So it's like a, mo it's a tracking? Mo motion tracking thing. No, I know what that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. So it's like... Doesn't it come with After Effects? No, as far as I know, but no, it does. I mean, it, it, he doesn't use it's an add-on for After Effects. I don't think it comes. No, it comes with. It After comes Effects. with. It always used to come with After Effects. Does it? Yeah, I'll look it up. Did you just pay money for a license? You this is a while ago. After right now, but basically, um, but I want it for. I dude, want it for a Adobe. Adobe needs an open source version too. Adobe is like in the shitter. I think. Like I, I don't understand. Yeah, it is. What is um, going on? But. It, Oh, sorry. Well, Mocha AE. So they have Mocha AE, um, which is like, yeah. but I, I guess it's need. almost the same thing. I didn't even know it that. It is exactly the same. Oh, thing. no, it isn't. Because 
you 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 i mean i have this thing here i wanted mocha 22 which has like a lot do? more stuff than why are you buying mocha what are you doing python mocha? scripts dude you don't you, you write your own python do not script. need to know what i'm doing with mocha I am power. I, mesh, I'm changing mesh the work stabilization. <laughs> I'm trying to fathom what the hell you would need Mocha for. Oh, I, I know. I bet I know what it's for. He what? gave us a hint in one of his other uh, in, in an earlier episode. Nothing you'll ever say is correct, uh, but guess. Can I guess? Yeah, because I don't have an answer. So does it? Oh, okay. are you watching video copilot tutorials? I don't even know who that is. Well, then why the hell are you buying Mocha? That's the only reason you'd ever buy Mocha. <clears throat> do you so, want to do like machine learning? No, Mocha is a video? tracking program. Yeah, so I I bought it because I had to try. I there was a I did a time lapse that was a giant nightmare, and After Effects whatever it wasn't working with the Mocha at the After Effects. So I, I I got a trial of Mocha and it worked. So then I got the real version. But I have some ideas of things I want to use. What were you tracking? Secret. <laughs> Wait, so this I know only a lot does like tracking this. like post production. This is only post production. I know a lot, a lot about this. So I thought this. Was, I thought you were going to use it for like your robot arm. Oh no! I, I want to do some cinematic. I want to do stuff like outside of YouTube and do some other like other Moco, stuff. Moco is for like planar yeah. tracking. I want to do some fancy stuff. <laughs> what? I'm trying to. Th what were you doing? <laughs> it's more what? Well, what will I do than what am yeah. I doing? <laughs> Why what are you could you do with this that you couldn't do just by like keyframing stuff manually? Um, the motion uh, track is much more, um, keyframing is harder than you think. Like the motion track is very good. That's usually what I do. To get it really good though. Like it you, doesn't I'll, need to be really I'll, good. No, I'll tell it you this. It depends like... on what you're doing. That's why I'm asking Nigel what he's doing. Yeah. Um, give the, us this, type it in chat. No, it's not, it's not a secret. I had, there was a couple things. I did a time lapse and what happened was. I don't know why, but the camera shook <laughs> in the time lapse. Right. So there was weird camera shake, and on top of it shaking, it moved around, but in like weird ways. So I tried to use the After Effects, like in After Effects tracking, it didn't work. I tried to use the Vegas tracking, didn't work. The only one I found was Mocha actually worked. So I by okay, I think I think so. The only reason you would ever use Mocha is if you are trying to stabilize like if you're trying to track like a surface like yeah like mocha will work for what you're trying to do but it's like there is a, there are way simpler ways of doing it you is you mocha should... for like simulating images on a phone yes. yeah, screen? yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect example but that's what i want to i want to do weird cgi that's all i'll say <laughs> you can but I think if you're trying to just stabilize a shot like that, like, so in, when you have a camera, there's a couple of problems with tracking is like, one is like, it's called, the first thing is called nodal pan. Nodal pan is when the camera rotates around the like optical axis. And so what happens is you could take a mm. sphere and project an image onto the sphere yeah. and you could look around it. That's a nodal pan. You can do some the cool stuff. When you, start, when, you start, when you start translating the camera, mm. you end up with parallax, right? Where you have this issue where the background mm -hmm. and foreground move at different rates. So the nodal pan simplicity disappears. But if you have very small amounts mm. of translation, you can pretty much ignore the parallax. And so if you just have a camera on a tripod and it's shaking, that's something that you should absolutely be able to solve with Stay, you can't, it did, just a regular track. It... Just delete that frame or two. The other problem, too, I don't, honestly, it's like you, you know, I, I, Nigel, I, I know a lot about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I bought it as in, the, it was right. kind of like, it was the only thing that seemed to fix my problem in a way that wasn't a giant nightmare. I spent a lot of time trying right. to fix it. So I was like, I bought it as an investment so that I was, inter I was honestly interested in learning it just because I think it's kind of fun because I would like right. to do just, some of that type of stuff, like being able to mask out people, like mask out things in the background. I just think it could be fun to learn that stuff. So it was kind of like more that's, for fun than good. it is. I don't plan to do like any crazy. I would say, I would say that you can do 90% of what you want to do in After Effects. That's true. I just hate After and Effects. If, you, if you're buying external tools, you probably have done something, like you've missed something. I just don't tools. like After Effects, but also apparently the- Why? I just find the layout. I don't know. There's just something weird. It always makes me mad when I use it. 
It's it's like Same uh, here. <laughs> Kevin. Really? Like, no, like I was in After Effects yeah. a while ago, just trying any any of those programs. Just trying to do like a tracking. The I was just trying stuff. to do a tracked motion like mask thing. Yeah. And I have the little like the little area I've selected. And then I just go to right. change it, and it just doesn't let me move the little dots. And I look up online, people are like, "There's no." It just, it was, it's not intuitive. I find that there's like a lot of stuff. I hit a wall, and then I just don't, unless I know somebody who does After Effects, and I ask them specifically how to fix it. That's me. You're just kind of like screaming at your computer. So okay, so yeah, I, I kind of see what you're saying, um, because there definitely are some processes where it sort of takes you into what feels like sub systems um like the motion tracking tool is sort of a tool that's like inside of a after effects so it's like when you want to edit the motion tracking data, yeah it takes you to like the source i'm gonna footage. have to edit the keyframes and i don't know yeah the keyframe it, yes exactly it's like the weird so it's like you, the keyframes are available to you in after mm. effects but enabled to engage with them in the tracking tool you have to like take that source footage and go back into the tracking tool and then it'll like it'll load the keyframes in mm. to the tracking tool, and so you can then retrack. Then it's like you have to like export you can, that segment of video and then re-put it and then put it back in the. Timeline. You don't have to do that if you want to track stuff. I think typically it tracks at the lowest level. So if you want to track footage, it will track at the source. So if you have like a composition and you're trying to track the composition, I don't think it likes that. Like it needs footage to track. And so it will only track raw video clips. So if you do something to it and then you want to track it later, which I don't necessarily, probably if you're doing that, probably means you're doing something wrong. Um, you should always be tracking like the raw footage. Like why would you, why would you change something and then export it and then track it again? Like that's kind of a weird pipeline. No, it's just like say it's, it's in the timeline. I, right. I want to, you know, I have it open. It's already there. I want to add some tracking text to it. Right. Why do I have to open up a whole new program? Have to like you don't have find to that. that clip in the finder. No, you don't have to do that, that. That's how it works with Final Cut Pro, though. Oh yeah, you shouldn't have to do that. No. So if you want to do that in Premiere, yeah, it's the same thing. You have to go inside of After Effects to do. Well, some yeah, that's tracking. what I mean. You got to go inside of a new program. So like the most confusing part about After Effects is like everything is kind of like like when I would do it, I would try to keep everything like super like parametric. Where if I would track footage. <laughs> I would take the data from the track footage and I would attach it to a null object, which is just like a shape that doesn't render out to like a little red square. And then you would take that, the, the information that you wanted to attach to your video and I would parent it to the null object. So now that the text that you want to stick to something is like it's leashed mm. to this shape that doesn't render out. So you can still move your object around manually but you're not actually manipulating the keyframe data that's been dumped onto that object. That keyframe data is being stored on the null yeah. object. Does that make sense? So it's like yeah. you, you track the footage, you dump that information into this little shape that doesn't render out, and then you can sort of you can like glue things to it, so that if you as long as there's not it, like a crazy amount of parallax or something. Right. So if there's parallax, now you've got it's a much more complicated track, and so that's why I'm asking with like Mocha and stuff. Is it's uh, it, mo when you have to open Mocha. It means Listen, that you didn't plan very well when you were shooting. <laughs> I mean, it depends, I it depends what you're decision. doing, right? It depends what you're doing. But it's definitely for more complex stuff. Like, the majority of what I do, no. You, if you open it, it's, it's, you're, you've taken out something that is going to be a time sink and a bunch of effort that you're, you are fixing. This is your last resort, basically. I do understand that. Yeah, you should be able. I mean, I would, I would be surprised if you really couldn't fix it with just the built-in tracking tools. Um, like, what do you like? The only reason, like, the only time I would use Mocha is if I was trying to get something to stick to a wall really well. Like, if you needed something so, that was like glued to a wall that you didn't, you couldn't see any shifting or like any, like even like just micro. I think what shifting, happened too is then I would use. It Mocha. was <clears throat> at the same time the thing that I was filming. The camera was moving, but the thing. Was, it's a cylinder and it started it rotated right. slowly and it was moving around and i think it was an after effects it, if it tracked the s exact same point correct it would end up moving in weird ways whereas in mocha correct. you can track like a large area and it has like yeah. it algorithmically like will warp it so it looks better um, after effects is like a surf is like a point tracker. yeah exactly so like the built-in trackers will track like like 
clusters mm -hmm. of, of pixels, whereas Mocha will track like a surface texture. Yeah, so I think that's what helped me. Either way, it was also just because I thought it would be fun to... I don't know. I want to do some funny. I want to do some like, you know, the camera fact that tricks. You bought it without realizing it's inside of After Effects. So that's, the, that, that's no, but I, I don't know what that mentality is called, but it's like the buying thing mentality. I didn't know, I don't know how to describe I it. I wanted to use it in because I edit in Vegas. So I wanted to use it through Vegas. Yeah. The other thing, though, is that uh, the full version, like the Mocha, like the Pro uh, AE is a limited version. Apparently it yeah, has like half. Any, you don't need it. I'm using that, every though. single function. I'm using Mocha Pro. You know, to every single function in detail. No. Give us a, show us something. I don't have anything. You know? <laughs> what? God damn. Nigel bought this license and it's just going to sit on his computer and he's like, never No, what actually happened was I bought it. I used it. Yeah. And then I was planning to look into it more. Then I started working on the most recent video and I've had no time. Until today, when right. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna look at it," and then I got pissed because I remembered it wasn't the wasn't the newest you version. Need to, you need to go and watch some uh, video copilot tutorials. Mm. Video copilot. Andrew Kramer, a god amongst men. <laughs> Here's the thing, Nigel. I can make fun of you for doing this, and you could have done it with with keyframes or whatever. But since you said it was for fun, I'm powerless. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Because I, I do the same thing, so that's valid. <laughs> yeah. If you're doing it for fun, I, I'm so gonna. I'm shut not up. gonna give you shit for doing it however you want to do it. I'm gonna give you shit for buying a license to a piece of software that you probably actually already have without realizing it. <laughs> that's that's fair. <laughs> You should ask me all this stuff. I, this is like the one thing. Like, if I didn't do any engineering stuff, I probably would have gone into like motion mm. graphics and and compositing. Honestly, I just like I wanted for Vegas. I saw that it worked. It, sorry, that it worked. The reason why I got messed up too is I bought it through the website that sells Vegas, which is where like the annoyance right. comes from because they just mm. sold an old version. Mm. Whereas it's like if I knew that I would have just bought it directly, or I would have actually like. Obviously, just look. I, I think I did see it in After Effects, but I wanted specifically Whatever one of the, the other After functions they has. Have. There's no way that that other function is actually going to make your life any easier. Like the what what you can do with After Effects, like it's like Photoshop. Like just because you have the tool doesn't mean you can just make things. You got to sort of learn the processes as well. Like how do you actually, you know, do something? And and uh, you see, no, no. Tracking, look, Mocha Pro 22 has a Python script editor. Mocha AE doesn't. And that's, oh that's exactly what I needed. I needed to be able to oh write God. my Python scripts. Wait, actually? <laughs> no. Can you do that? <laughs> I can't code for I can't code anything. <laughs> but Kevin. He's the renaissance Kevin, man. Maybe I, you know, I got to future proof it. What was if I do learn Python and I regret it? Hey, you could learn <laughs> Python for fun. And I regret it. You know, we started, we started this episode. I wanted to talk about diy like wartime body armor <laughs> of like what you would do in a situation if you were like dealing with that kind of catastrophe on your front uh, doorstep and we'll now we're somehow talking about in the patreon episode okay please god i want to talk about diy body armor and the and how much you're you're gonna die and we can no talk about the biggest news to hit this week the what the biggest news to hit this week, the one, you know, everyone's been talking about it. Oh, the thermo. No, Nigel finally put out a video. <laughs> the biggest, oh. <laughs> the biggest news. It's, it's got, it's a worldwide, uh, it's, it will. It's, it's a phenomenon. Well, how do you not know? It's everyone Nigel's can't stop dead. talking about it. Yeah. They can't stop because they haven't finished exactly. watching it. <laughs> I'm still watching it. <laughs> It was like a just bones. <laughs> Three hours. Dude, all those, all those brave souls who made it to the end. Like I, they're, they're. I don't know how, so you, man. I got, I got like forty minutes in, and I was sitting there, and I was like, I was like, man, I got, I have shit, I got to do today. <laughs> I have to do. That's, that's what I was telling Corey. I was like, I think there's this cutoff where it's like, around like the forty minute mark is. Someone can someone can sit and commit, but it's around that moment that the video is not ending, and they see there's still 20 minutes left. It's I, I got other stuff I need to do. If somebody actually got all the way through your video, and, who all the people that did, they need they have serious procrastination <laughs> issues, and they need to reevaluate how they spend their time. It's like they watched a movie, <laughs> like straight up. It's like they just if they watch it midday, it's like they just watched a movie midday. Also, I realized something about your videos. I want to give you a tip. Okay as a person who was consuming it do you know what got me off watching your video what do you mean got you off like the things that i enjoyed okay about what it. 
the like the large quantity of a thing like like seeing like a little tiny like dump of like a powder like a resultant mm-hmm. w- kind of like doesn't feel good there's something kind of like asmr about having like a thing filled up with something like even if it means the container you're using is small <laughs> what, what do you mean <laughs> like when you when you have your product yeah. like when you're doing when you're doing the chemistry you're middle like you're in the midway through like like a status one of the satisfying shots is like you like you're reducing the uh whatever the the like secondary reaction the acid okay. was the uh um what was the first stage Dude, you're asking the, my brain is so fried i don't remember all right never mind um uh you go from like one crystalline powder to like a second okay. crystalline powder basically uh and when you were reducing it you kept putting it in a smaller and smaller and smaller mm-hmm. beakers and so it almost like there's something about feeling like like there's a lot of it. Like it almost is like I don't know how to describe it, but it sort of it like it felt nice when it's like you do this and then you like you like have this tray that's like filled with powder, even if it's a tiny yeah. tray and you like pour it out then on the table. Like there, there's something like disappointing when there's like a small amount. I don't know. Well, sorry, I don't I'm, know I'm not exactly it. sure like, what you mean. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. So it's like. There was something kind of ASMR, like this enjoyable, like subconscious <laughs> thing of like, like if you're if you're making a thing okay. and you're like putting reactants in and you end up with your final product, having a beaker with like a oh, tiny yeah, bit of yeah, thing yeah. at the bottom <laughs> is like feels bad. It feels bad. Well, I'm like, I want that to be so like full, even though you gotta the, get those the, it's tiny, funny tiny how it's beers. funny how you mentioned that because there was one email I got from a guy once and I'm like, this guy understands me. And he actually commented, I don't think many people understand you like I do almost. And I was like, you, you do. <laughs> oh God. Because a lot of people, and I actually got flack from this, from random comments. People don't realize that. This is from the guy who says he doesn't read the comments. He's like, yeah. don't bother me. <laughs> no, no. Because like, so, some people would, there was a time where people went like, why does he always go, oops, I didn't realize that like it was going to overflow the, the, the beaker. Why didn't he just start with a bigger beaker? And I'm like, I can't because yeah. everything that I do has to be 75% full. So that's a, you need to do a commentary video. Like, all right, guys, <laughs> I went out and bought the world's largest so, beaker. It's it's 500 liters. I can never fill it, <laughs> overfill it on accident ever again. You like pour like so, a one like a liter bottle is, of water and it doesn't even fill up the whole bottle. It's something I actually do want to talk about just quickly because people don't realize that a lot of the hindrances to the project isn't even the science. It's how it's filmed. So. Yeah. For some of oh, them, yeah. it's like, uh, for example, like the, the cotton balls to cotton candy video, most of the procedures require uh, a bit of pressure, like 15 PSI, which you could technically do. I, I bought high pressure glassware for it, but you need it to be like four liters. So they do it in like a pre- Yeah, the bigger, the bigger it well, is, the it's thicker so, the walls are going to have to be you for need, that pressure. It's like a lot of acid to a little bit of cotton. So people, you can use like a right. pressure cooker, but I'm like, you can't see it. So one of the biggest hindrances right. on the project, wow, voice crack. Uh, one of the biggest <laughs> hindrances on the project. Scott, edit that to be louder and replay it like three uh, times. Project, project, project. Yeah. <laughs> was, um, I was like, this procedure has to be done in glass. So that's why it took right. me so long to put it together. And because it need to be like it need to be visually nice and i need and yeah. i was like it has to be one whole bag of cotton that has to be my scale and right because i was like it has to be one full bag of cotton going into one beaker and it has to fill the beaker to the 75 percent mark um this is the kind of thing that you'll be able to explain to yeah. us i mean the audience i feel like generally will like understand it but like to really understand it but even like like just to give an idea for like the hot sauce video the one of the reasons why it took me a while to finish it too was we were like we had to make the label for the hot sauce bottle and i was like i need to find a bottle that looks like a hot sauce bottle that fits the whole aesthetic why didn't you just go buy a hot sauce i did, I did. i'm just saying that like these are the details that like <laughs> that that we end up putting into <laughs> mind blown. no no but i'm saying that I, I spent a while looking for bottles that i thought would be aesthetically nice and then the other yeah. thing that's messed up is i go I plan this whole reaction. I don't know how much I'm going to get in the end, but I go assuming my ideal is that I use a, all my product to make the hot sauce. How much hot sauce will it make? That amount that I make has to fit into the bottle I buy in an aesthetic volume. The, I feel like these are problems where it's like, just make the hot sauce waterier. No, no, I'm just saying though that in real. this one, people won't know the taste, More watery. but it's like a lot of the yeah. videos, like when I plan the entire procedure, it takes me a long time to be like, I need to, I plan what containers and things I put it in. And if you see some old videos, 
they're not done in glassware. They're done in like random pieces of like plastic containers and other stuff. And it's because they like I needed to match video. the volume to a certain amount. Right. I'm just saying it's actually a huge Rule hindrance. Of thirds, right? Well, it's like a big hindrance to how I film the videos. It goes beyond filming with films. I, it goes into yeah, chemistry and This is the kind of beakers. thing that like, you know, I, I laugh about this because I, I have a feeling. I mean, I, you know how it is. The, yeah. Some of the other chemistry channels probably like, I don't want to say they don't like you, but there's definitely probably like a little bit of jealousy where it's like, why, you know, like there's some older chemistry channels in you. And it's like, like, why is this guy doing so well? Like I started doing chemistry way earlier than him. But I like I'm just speculating too. Or I'm right? doing like more advanced sort of... stuff than him. Right, right. Sure. There's definitely yeah, some kind are. of crusty <laughs> chemist, like I say. You know, it, it's a thing, you know, whatever. Um so like I have a feeling that what they don't quite understand is like the work that you put into it's just all speculation. Yeah. Too. I don't know what I'm going. Um the difference is you put a lot of effort into sort of like the ASMR, oh, yeah. like the 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 pleasing feeling of seeing the chemistry like it's less about the chemistry and more about the aesthetic oh yeah of how are you showcasing it because it makes it very easy to digest it mm. makes it very clear it makes it very like everything is like hyper isolated so i mean yeah. even i mm. when i was like making my when i was you, I yeah was you had you a video, bit of an like experience this, doing the chemistry stuff yeah an experience of it of like setting up the camera mm. for like okay like here is an angle like straight on like that's going to be good but even like one thing i did i had the freaking silk screen of the beaker <laughs> Facing the camera. The what? Oh. And the silk screen facing the camera I was gets in the way of the stuff. <laughs> no, you, in, yes. you have to flip it the other way. <laughs> and so the, the, the silk screen, <laughs> I'm like realizing I need to flip it yeah. away. Because if you have the camera on autofocus, it focuses on oh, the yeah, silk you don't screen. Do, so you don't do one thing is you, I specifically use micro four thirds cameras because you don't do autofocus. And if you focus on the front of the glass and with a micro four thirds yeah, camera, whole thing, the whole thing's in right. focus. Right. So it's like you need a deep depth of field. Right. Which means you need a lot of light. And then it's like how you even light it. Like like mine just, I think, naturally look pretty good because I have an overhead yeah, I, light I found for whatever that reason. The, I just the felt overhead, nice. I, I, should, I could definitely light mine better. The problem is it's glass, so it all reflects. Yeah. Yes. You light it from the front. Guess you what? You just see. So I have a polarizer. <laughs> but here's the thing that's kind of like wonky, too, is the polarizer blocks a lot of the reflected light. So the glass looks a lot cleaner. Uh, and sometimes I've yeah. actually put like, dude, some of the setups people, I've not talked about it, but like it's, I would set up like barriers of like Bristol yeah. board. So you don't see the reflections. Mm -hmm. Um, but the problem with the polarizer is what's messed up. Like for example, the ferro fluid video, it's all black. If you don't have reflection off the surface, you get no depth perception, mm, but if you get right. all reflection, you, it's just white. So what I, you have yeah. to do is you have to do the polarizer, but then shoot light on a certain angle to shadow it. So you get like the right. contrast to have the, so it's like it's black, but you also get the reflection of white to see the depth of the, of the ferro fluid. Like it took me a long time just to set up like shots so that they look decent. Yeah. I just, dude, I spent like $600 <laughs> on the overhead lights in the garage that are permanently fixtured. And then I spent like a couple thousand dollars on the the two standing lights, mm. and I just leave them the exact no, it, same. Like, I mean, <laughs> you're, I mean, in your intros and everything, or when you sit there, it looks good. The lighting's good. It's just like really expensive, mm. or not? They're not even that expensive. It's just very high quality lights. But being able to just keep just them there is the key, like, where you can just turn them yeah. on. Well, the the ceiling ones, that's literally the garage yeah. lights now. It's just like these hyper clean white lights. And that's what I've kind like of daylight balance. set up. But I definitely could do a better. I could do with some more light sometimes. Oh my god! But it, I think it's fine. It's yeah. A lot of the planning goes into like just how it's going to be filmed, and what gives me so much anxiety is, for example, I know that certain things have to be like ASMR. So I'm just going to say for so for example, anytime I take a beaker off uh, a hot plate, I make sure to slide it or to tap the corner. So I have like my little. Let's say this is it. So it's like you pick up a beaker. I'd always be like. You tap it as you as you leave. It just makes you it makes you look like a, well because otherwise it's silent. Word? So it's like, like you tip, have to like, like tap tip. it and it feels satisfying. For OCD. Um, or like yeah, I noticed that, but then I noticed you did it differently once, and I was severely disappointed. <laughs> and there was like for example, if I drop in a stir bar, the problem is it splashes the water, but I need to drop it in so it, you hear it. I also noticed that you drop in the stir bars differently every time. Sometimes you would slide it down the edge, and sometimes you just drop it I guess it, it depends in. how much... That made me very... As a viewer, I was very upset. So actually, you. one like a behind-the-scene thing is when I made the Oxime, uh, I redid the reaction four times. This was dumb. Right. This is just dumb. 
because I kept putting all the chemicals in, dissolving them in water, and then I wanted to drop the stir bar in, but it splashed. And I didn't like that it splashed on the face of the beaker. So I redid it four times until I quit and started with the stir bar and the beaker. I was like, you know what? I don't get to drop it in. It's impossible not to make it splash. That was just dumb. That's just dumb. But it's like, what's stressful is when you have reactions you can't redo. And for example, like when I was working with the, the what's it called? The spot. Wait, really quick. Why do I get the feeling that Kevin is on Discord or Reddit? Because <laughs> he's just silent staring. <laughs> I see his eyes going Flicking. back and forth. <laughs> Kevin, which Maybe. one are you on? No, I'm on oh Twitter. Oh God, you got him. <laughs> Even worse. Um, I don't know. Either way, it's just like there are certain things I know that will sound good. And it's like, it's stressful because I'm like, I only have one shot to make it work. So it's like, I, I get stressed filming it. All right. Well, if you guys want to hear more about Nigel's stress and our our uh, our wartime DIY oh safety devices, come yes. to our Patreon exclusive episode, which uh, uh, improvised munitions. Im <laughs> <laughs> on our on our extra, we're going to be talking about Russian politics and why. Uh, never mind. I'm not. I don't How know. to make a better uh, Moldov cocktail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think was, I would listen to that. I would pay $5 to listen to Nigel tell me how to make a better Molotov cocktail. So I actually, okay, no, we'll talk about this in the Patreon thing. I have a question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a valid question. Okay. It's probably like a very simple answer. Who's the sponsor of today's video? All right, this, this episode of Safety Third was sponsored by Vladimir Putin. He says that uh, Russia is a very lovely country and that we should lift the sanctions off of him. <laughs> That's a message for any of the government officials who watch this podcast that Vladimir Putin <laughs> would like to share with you today. How much did he pay you? $3. <laughs> Four hundred thousand well, rubles. Week, last week it was twelve dollars, but the, <laughs> yeah. the ruble has dropped. <laughs> All, All right. right, see you guys I'm on the Patreon.